All right, we're gonna look at the muscles of the wrist. There is a palpation video um, where I talk about the bony landmarks of the uh, wrist and forearm um, that you can check out. It actually has a real person's arm. It's my husband in the video. <laughs> so um, we'll just talk a little bit about the line of pull of the muscles. The nice thing about the, the wrist muscles, just a lot like the um, extrinsic muscles of the foot and ankle, they are, they're organized into neat little groups. So the wrist extensors have a common origin at the lateral epicondyle. Um, it's called the common extensor tendon, lateral epicondyle of the humerus, common extensor tendon. Um, they're extensors, so we know that they are going to be posterior. Flexors are going to be anterior. Makes sense, right? So the extensor carpi radialis brevis is just medial to the extensor carpi radialis longus. Um, its origin is that common extensor origin on the lateral epicondyle. Um, tennis elbow is a wrist extensor issue. So um, tennis elbow is, uh, you feel the pain usually at the lateral epicondyle. So um, the insertion of the extensor carpi radialis brevis is the base of the third metacarpal. So one, two, three. The base, you can see that line of pull for wrist extension. Couldn't be better, right? Okay. So, and everything on the posterior arm, just like the triceps, gets the radial nerve. So the extensors all get the radial nerve. The extensor carpi radialis longer, almost the exact same um, origin and insertion, except it's just a little bit lateral. It goes from the common extensor origin at the lateral epicondyle of the humerus to the base of the second metacarpal. So it gives you that little line of pull, tiny line of pull for um, radial deviation because it's a little more lateral. So with the wrist muscles, there's that great diagram in the book and I had it in the lecture um, how they, there's a balance between flexion, extension, radial, and ulnar deviation. It's pretty cool. Um, the extensor carpi ulnaris, the other thing I love about the wrist muscles is the extrinsics is their name tells you what they do. Extensor carpi means wrist, ulnaris means it's on the ulnar side. So lateral epicondyle, common extensor origin, it goes to the base of the fifth metacarpal and it gives you that line of pull for ulnar deviation and wrist extension. Super easy, radial nerve. That's what I love about the wrist extensors. They tell, their name tells you what they do and um, they're easy to remember. So we're going to the anterior side to look at the wrist flexors. The wrist flexors also have a common origin, which is really great, at the medial epicondyle. So the um, primary wrist flexors include flexor carpi radialis, so flex the wrist on the radial side, flexor carpi ulnaris, so flex the wrist on the ulnar side, and the palmaris longus. It's long and it goes to the palm, <laughs> if you want to think of it that way. Um, the extrinsic flexors to the digits, the flexor digitorum profundus and superficialis, and the flexor pulsus longus, also do wrist flexion because they cross the wrist and they have that line of pull for flexion. So um, it's nice you have that group um, working for you. So the flexor carpi radialis, just like its name says, it goes from the medial um, epicondyle, the common flexor tendon, to the base of the second metacarpal. You can see it has that super duper line of pull for wrist flexion, and it has a little bit of an oblique line, so it has a line of pull for radial deviation. It's on the radial side. Interestingly enough, flexor carpi ulnaris, same origin. The insertion is more medial, and so it gives you a line of pull for ulnar deviation. So the common flexor tendon, the, um, the pisiform and the base of the fifth metacarpal, so you have that line of pull for ulnar deviation and wrist flexion. So the pisiform, remember, is embedded in the tendon of the flexor carpi ulnaris, and that gives it a little bit of a longer moment arm for um, better mechanical advantage, right? Better torque. So the palmaris longus, 21% of people don't have it. 
you can see pretty clearly that I do have it. It's this big tendon that pops out right here. <laughs> so if someone doesn't have it, you won't see that tendon with wrist flexion. So the um, palmaris longus also originates at the common flexor tendon on the medial epicondyle. Um, it inserts on the transverse carpal ligament and it is superficial to the flexor retinaculum. It assists in wrist flexion and it tenses the um, transverse carpal ligament and the palmar aponeurosis. So um, the reason that, um, that you can see it pop out like that is because it's superficial to the retinaculum. So the other ones are underneath the retinaculum and the, the retinaculum of the wrist prevents bow stringing of the tendons, but the palmaris longus is superficial to that, and so you get that little pop out. That's the bow stringing. So the, the radial and ulnar deviators are combinations of all of those. Um, so the, the ones that are more to the radial side can do radial devi deviation, whether they're extensors or flexors. And the ones that are more to the medial side can do ulnar deviation, whether they're extensors or flexors. So it's pretty neat. They both have, they have um, dual functions depending on where they're located. And that just really illustrates line of pull. It's all about line of pull.